three, two, one, go! Woo! Like many other games, Stardew Valley has a fairly active speedrunning scene. There's a bunch of popular categories and it's regularly featured in GDQ, one of the most popular speedrunning marathons. In these speedruns, players need to come up with the most optimal paths through town, find the best money-making methods, and use a couple of tricks like animation cancelling to beat the game as fast as they can. But what is beating the game in Stardew Valley? There's not really a designated stopping point to the game, unless you want to count perfection, which takes so long that it's not really a viable speedrun, since it requires you doing literally everything in the game, like collecting every single item, making an absolute ton of money, maxing out friendships, and oh so much more. It's impossible unless you're one of the three players that have actually done it. Thank you, Haboo, for the world record of 21 hours and 37 minutes, good lord. So thanks to the open-endedness of Stardew Valley, people have been left to come up with their own goals for a speedrun. Perhaps the most common is completing the community center, which takes a hefty two to three hours itself, with a spin-off category for completing the Jojo membership form, hovering around an hour in time. In the case of the community center, the run is super involved. You have to decide what part of the game you're tackling when, figure out the best paths through all of those separate parts, and react to the luck you're given. You make a lot of your money through farming, so a bunch of rainy days could save minutes from your time. And unless you want to route out time for getting a ton of healing items, you're going to have to be efficient in the mine so that you don't pass out early. And how lucky you get with ladders determines how deep you go. Just sleeping is a heavy component of the run. Eventually, you will need to get items exclusive to winter, so knowing when to speed up your days by sleeping is important. And it's mostly done while you're growing your money crops. Water, sleep, check for rain, water, sleep, check for rain, repeat until they're grown. And if you thought this was just a planning and strategy type of run, oh no. There's one trick that drives the mechanical skill requirement through the roof, and that's animation cancelling. This is done by pressing a combination of keys in the middle of an animation. This is a PC exclusive trick, and luckily for speedrun purposes, you're allowed to bind all three buttons to the same key. Almost every single action you can do can be cancelled. Cutting trees, mining rocks, milking, and depending on what animation you're cancelling, you can save anywhere from a fourth of a second to half of a second every single action. And that'll add up. And of course, you have to be careful because if you end the animation a bit too early, you won't perform the action at all. You need to aim for cancelling right after the action is done. So it's high risk, high reward. Doing this for every single action can be exhausting. So for some runs, like community center completion, there exists a vanilla category where the only difference compared to glitchless is a lack of animation canceling. If you would like your speedruns in smaller, bite-sized chunks, there's also categories for completing each separate bundle, getting married, and reaching certain points in the mines, all reasonable goals that make sense. These options allow for more focused playthroughs where everything you do works to speed up your one singular goal, like gathering food to prepare for a mines run, or quickly gathering all of the loved items for a marriage candidate. Another subcategory for most runs is multiplayer, where you tackle the same tasks, just with two to four players. The interesting thing about Stardew Valley is that it plays very differently in multiplayer. For one, the time of day never stops during pauses while fishing or other places where it normally would, giving you a little less time on average to accomplish what you need to in a day. Second, there are many more glitches that can be done, most notably item duplication. Any item by being placed on a table can be duplicated by being picked up by both players at the same time. This stays true for many actions throughout the game. If you cut a tree or break a rock at the same time, you'll get twice the resources. And just in general, since both players can split up and tackle different tasks, especially in a run like Community Center, it leads to a very different experience from single player. By the way, if you were wondering, glitches blow the game right open, mostly thanks to the item ID glitch. If you name yourself open bracket, the number of an item ID, close bracket, you can do this three times in one name, every time someone says your name, you will receive all of those items. Needless to say, in categories where the whole point is collecting a bunch of items, like Community Center, that cuts the time down quite a bit. This particular run was one of many to be showcased in Games Done Quick, and it only took the runner 17 minutes as opposed to the over 2 hours that glitchless runs take. There does exist a darker area of starting speedruns.
Stardew Valley Category Extension. This category in speedrun.com was created in 2021. Basically, since they had so many popular categories, the more unconventional ones were placed into a voting bracket and voted on by the speedrunning community. The winners got official spots in the category extension. This is where the aforementioned perfection category sits, with only two submissions that meet the site's requirements, each being well over a day long. Another reasonable speedrun here is Skull Cavern 100s, where you simply need to reach floor 100 of the Skull Cavern. The only prerequisites are reaching the bottom of the mines and making enough money to finish the vault bundle, and then it's just a case of getting down. And then looking over at Seated Perfection- oh, there's nothing here. Wait, yeah there is. Blade? When was this run verified? 20 hours ago. Well, I was gonna go on about how you could get a world record if you simply put in a seed and got perfection, but I guess that's not the case anymore. Regardless, just yesterday, Blade posted that he has another route for seeded perfection. So he's once again gone through the astronomical task of finding a seed that has everything he needs for perfection. So why is it so hard? Sure, optimizing for the community center, you're finding good mines patterns, forgeable spawns, the spaces that crops will be higher quality, but now add on to that good skull cavern and volcano layouts, special orders and key quest missions, golden coconut items, gosh, just about every single item in the collection logs have some sort of optimization to be made for them. All of this with the grueling grind of making 25 million gold to buy all of the obelisks and golden clock. Moving on from that though, there's one section here that interests me more than the others. Meme. Within this category are several subcategories of seemingly random endpoints. Parsnip percent. You need to get a parsnip as fast as possible. As you can probably guess, it involves planting one of the seeds you get from the gift, watering it for three days with the freebie of guaranteed rain on day three, and plucking. Wrong. You don't want to grab seeds from the box, that animation is too slow. No, what you need to do is cut whatever fiber is closest to the farmhouse, hope that you get mixed seeds, a 5% chance, then plant it and hope that it happens to be a parsnip, a 33% chance, and then you can water it until plucking. If, the, if it'll just finish fricking saving. <laughs> I just, my leg's cramping up. I think that's world record. I think that's world. That is world record. Like, that's world record. That's world record. That's world record. That's world record. This is the world record. 42 seconds. Despite being so short, this run takes dozens of hours of grinding. That's the thing about a lot of these meme runs. They're so specific, so straightforward, and so short, yet it's almost never done the way you expect. Underwear, soup percent. With God as my witness, you gotta put the underwear in the soup. After the creation of this category, only one man was up to the task. Wix Kickix. He's gotta drink it, by the way. The governor has to drink it. He's gotta drink the underwear soup. It's essential. Why does Shawnee do have fifth place? Sea urchin percent. 
Time ends when a hat is placed on a sea urchin within a fish tank. So this one intrigues me like a lot. There's three pieces to the puzzle here. The sea urchin, the fish tank, and the hat. You gotta figure out how to gather each one and combine them. It's a lot to think about, plenty of ways to complete this puzzle, but which is the fastest? Well, for the sea urchin, you may think that you have to take a trip to the tide pools, which would require 300 wood, but with the beach farm, they have a chance to spawn on your shore. Not too bad. The fish tank is pretty simple. There's not a lot of ways to get them, especially early game. Luckily, Willy sells the smallest kind for 500 gold, which just so happens to be the exact amount of money you start the game with. You also have to sleep until day two so that he's open, but that has the added benefit of spawning you right next to the shop when you enter the beach due to the fishing rod cutscene. Here's where we hit the snag though. There's almost 100 hats in the game, tons of different ways to obtain them, which one is consistent and fast enough to be the right choice? Well, if we sleep until the Easter egg hunt and win it, we'll get the straw hat for free. If we rush five hearts with someone, we could buy the butterfly bow from the hat mouse for a thousand gold. And if we really rush, maybe we could catch 10 different fish on day two living hat. It's a bit of a curse that the fastest hat to obtain in the game is simultaneously the rarest. One in 100,000 chance each time you cut fiber to spawn. So the strategy is, sleep to day two, walk around your beach farm looking for a sea urchin, and while you do that, cut all the fiber you come across hoping for the living hat. Then you go and buy the fish tank, place the sea urchin in, and slap the hat on. This is a 3 minute and 11 seconds run. The luck factor is so severe that the second place time using this same strategy is 2 minutes longer. And the beauty of it is, this isn't nearly optimized. There's almost infinite room for improvement. As fast as you could cut one piece of fiber and reach a spot that a sea urchin can spawn, that's as fast as the run could get. In the world record time, he even cut the fiber to get the living hat and didn't realize it for about another 30 seconds because it blended in with all the other fiber he was picking up. The first run with a different strategy comes in fourth place and utilizes the Easter egg hunt for the straw hat, sitting at seven minutes and 49 seconds. Crazy enough, there's a third strategy that actually competes with the Easter egg hunt, and that's when we get into hat mouse percent. Hat mouse percent is yet another category in meme runs where you simply need to speak to the hat mouse, and hat mouse doesn't open until you obtain your first achievement. Once again, there's several ways you could obtain your first achievement, like making money or becoming friends with someone. And luckily, we don't need to buy the hat, so we have 500 gold to work with. Surprisingly, the achievement that takes the shortest amount of time to get is crafting 10 items. Turns out, a lot of stuff just takes a small amount of wood. And by breaking a couple of rocks on your farm, along with buying from Robin, you can get enough stone for some recipes too. And while you're at Robin's, you buy some of the flooring recipes, almost all of which are crafted with just one wood or one stone. So just hyper craft all the recipes in one go and walk on down. Checking all the other runs, it seems like this is the only strategy with a competitive time. However, that brings us back to sea urchin percent. The third strategy is to buy the hat from crafting 10 items and use that for the sea urchin. Since we need to buy the hat this time, we do need to make a thousand gold. So in this run, Le Chaton clay farms at the beach, both to make money to buy the hat and to buy more resources instead of cutting trees and breaking rocks herself. The time for this strategy clocks in at 8 minutes and 55 seconds, only a minute behind the egg festival strategy. And Le Chaton is the only person with a run submitted with this strategy and admits there's a lot of room for improvement. For all of the speedruns we've discussed so far, there are kind of notable things that can happen. Getting your first achievement, performing a beloved easter egg, but uh, some categories get a bit abstract with it. In posh percent, the first category where I had to look at the rules, time ends after consuming wine and cheese. There's one catch, it can't be bought from the traveling cart. Part of the advantage of just making up any speedrun goal, I suppose, is making it as specific as you want. And if the traveling cart was included, it would indeed be pretty boring, as you'd just be resetting over and over again, waiting for the traveling cart to have exactly what you need. And we wouldn't want to run dictated by RNG. Again, we have a puzzle. Cheese and wine. Two very specific items with very specific ways of obtaining them. The way I see it, there's two different ways you could get each of these items. The normal way, and the stupid way that they'll probably use. You could make the cheese and wine yourself, or 
For the cheese, you could trade an emerald at the Desert Trader on Friday. And for the wine, you could sleep through every day all the way to the Feast of the Winter Star, where you then have a very low chance of getting it as a gift from an adult. And what do you know, they- oh, they use the normal way. I don't know. I think I'm onto something with the Feast of the Winter Star thing. So this isn't a short run. The world record is about an hour and involves a couple of key points. First, you need to complete the Artisan Bundle to obtain a keg, otherwise you'd have to reach level 8 farming. This involves a lot of luck with the Fruit Pack Cave. You do have to reach level 6 farming, however, to get a cheese press. And then you need to get a cow so that you can get the milk for the cheese. And no, you're not allowed to buy the milk from the traveling cart either, although I think it'd be pretty funny if you were. That being said, there's still a ton of steps leading up to that, such as completing the crafts room bundle to even unlock the artisan bundles, going through several seasons of farming just to reach level 6, and getting the money to build a barn and buy a cow. You already go all the way to fall to complete the run normally, and it makes me wonder if anyone even tried to get the wine from the Feast of the Winter Star. It also makes me sick that it could once again defile yet another Another category with luck. There's just one more run from speedrun.com that I want to discuss. Junimo Kart. It's cute. Instead of playing the main game, you can take a break and play a mini game within Stardew Valley and compete for a record there. No! No, what you actually have to do is unlock Junimo Kart in the first place, which means you are performing an entire other speedrun, floor 120 of the mines, and then completely switching gears and playing a very difficult minigame. Then time ends when you beat it. Oh, you died a bunch in the fun little apple creature minigame? There goes your world record mind speed run. There's four submissions. Speaking of submission counts, I find it important to note that many of the meme speedrun categories have more submissions than the main categories, like community center completion. That's how popular they are. Of course, there exists a world outside of speedrun.com where content creators basically turn anything into a run. In fact, I have one very special example that I've been watching for a while. For months now, Treon Thania has been randomly speedrunning an item, determined by a wheel. The goal is to simply obtain the item as fast as possible. Sometimes it's sweet and simple, like the red cabbage, just sleep until year two, plant it, water, and harvest. While that could be maxed out by checking the traveling cart and luckily getting a red cabbage seed early, this is for fun and done in one attempt, so the strategy is to find the most consistent method to get a good time. For other items, it gets a bit more complicated, like the bomb. There's several ways to get it, a lucky drop from enemies, crafted after level 6 mining, bought from the dwarf. It's fun seeing them chart out every possibility and performing the best one, all in around a minute. They've done about 40 items so far, and if you're wondering what the most popular video has been, it's the one for Sap. They cut down a tree. Never change, start your community. The crazy thing is, almost every single video is a unique path with different choices to consider. Even different forgeables for the same season have you walking different places where they're more common. And if this concept of random short speedruns interests you, may I introduce you to Bingo? Now the idea of a bingo board for a game is not new, it's been done for games like Minecraft or Pokemon, and now Stardew Valley is subject to it too. For Stardew Valley Bingo, you're able to generate a random set of goals laid out on a bingo board, and you need to complete all of them as fast as you can. Examples of goals include obtaining a certain amount of an item, getting a specific buff, upgrading a tool. If you can think of it, it's probably a possibility. And if you're unfamiliar with bingo battles, generally players will go head to head on the same board, and the most common playstyle is lockout, where whoever gets the majority of the spaces on the board wins. With this, we can have endless randomly generated speedrun prompts because apparently we were having trouble coming up with them on our own. What if I told you that you don't even have to speedrun anything in the game? There's one popular mod that consistently tracked speedruns, and that's the roguelike mod. Developed by the Habu, a speedrunner himself, this mod essentially boils the game down to just combat, with many systems in place to make it more interesting. There's bosses, rest floors with randomized shops and perks, event floors like an aiming gallery, king of the hill, and even easter egg hunts. I gotta tell you, I love this mod. And that's why, when he hosted a competition to see who could complete all 48 floors of the dungeon the fastest, I participated. And won. So I can actually tell you about this speedrun pretty in-depth. First of all, the run is an RNG fest. 
Daggers were extremely powerful in this patch, so if you didn't get any daggers for any set of floors, it was a heavy time loss. For most of the floors, you simply complete them as fast as you can, usually involving killing monsters or on minigame floors, trying to get the best score that you can so that you can get a diamond. This diamond can then be sold at shops for more supplies and better weapons. There's a couple of different strategies depending on the floor, like making sure you're next to a chest when it spawns on the egg hunt stage, or dragging the slime boss to a corner where it can't move out of your attack range, but for the most part, all floors are played as intended. In the long term, you're trying to eventually work towards a critical hit build. There's guaranteed forge floors later in the run, so by then you'll want to have found three aquamarines to triple forge critical chance onto your weapon. You'll also want to get lucky with perks, as there's a couple that will increase your critical hit rate and damage as well as a couple that increase your chance to get gems and increase your speed. Funny enough, despite this being a combat-focused mod, it ends up being less mechanically difficult than vanilla Stardew runs, since there's not as much of a reliance on animation cancelling, and it's a pretty short run. It mostly came down to grinding runs for good luck for fast floors, good weapons, and good perks. So I've covered all of this, and I just know that there's some smash hit speedrun series out there that I missed. Something like Egg Percent, where you slingshot an egg at someone, or Thick Junibo Percent. I don't know, something like that. And it's out there. It's everywhere. And I love it. Let me know if you have any favorite Stardew speedruns, and if I missed something essential out there. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, and good night. <laughs>